Thank you for coming. Uh, let's uh, give you a brief report about uh, the <laughs> recent and also older development of, of uh, PyWBS project. Oh, there is a table of content. What is PyWPS? Uh, as uh, most of you might know, it's the implementation of OGC web processing service standard on the server side using Python programming language. Uh, it's uh, rather old. Uh, it started in uh, 2016, so it, yeah, better call it mature. <laughs> and uh, it uh, support, yeah, it uses uh, the, all the available tools in Python. Uh, which are there are in, uh, every every year there there are new tools coming up, and uh, PyWPS tries to wrap them uh, around and create a WPS web processing service envelope around them simply. And uh, luckily, you can find more information in a more structured way on uh, the PyWPS org web page. What is it not? Some people have uh, too high expectations, maybe, or m probably too different expectations. Uh, it totally shouldn't be complicated for uh, usage uh, from the <laughs> programmer's perspective. Uh, there is no client uh, for web processing uh, services. Uh, it's just pure server, nothing more. No fancy web application, no even better desktop application, nothing. Uh, therefore, yeah, no graphical user interface, apparently. So we were heavily inspired by map server. And uh, there are no processes on the server. People are asking some from time to time, does PyWPS know how to buffer? The response is like, no. But write a process uh, which will buffer vector data is uh, like two lines of code. Nobody did a uh, web processing service uh, uh, introduction yet. Very basically, it's one of the OGC XML-based uh, files. You apparently have get capabilities uh, uh, request, and then there are some me uh, other metadata requests like describe process. And of course, the most uh, important one is the execute request, uh, which is calling the process instance or starting a process instance on the server. And uh, at the end of the day, or maybe the next day, you sh as a client should uh, obtain uh, some result of the calculation. There are three predefined uh, data types in the version, uh, most common version uh, of the standard, which is the literal type of data, uh, so basically text uh, input or output, uh, complex data, uh, which is referring to vector data features as well as uh, raster data files, and bounding box for specifying uh, yeah, left, lower, and top, upper coordinates, pair of coordinates of some region of interest. Most used in, the pract in, in practice on daily usage are literal data and complex data. I don't see much processes using bounding box. Yeah. Uh, this is how it works, uh, simply that you have a container with uh, supporting or offering uh, many processes uh, via the web processing service standard and the client communicates with the container or with the instant, with the installation uh, through the three type of requests I was just describing. Yeah, uh, the essential functionalities of uh, PyWPS is, uh, as we said, as I said, is the communication communication bridge, or maybe envelope between the tools and the internet. Uh, it fetches uh, the the required data from various data sources uh, for for you, so to say, in a, in a most safe way, in a way that it takes care on how big the data are. And in case they are simply too big, it will refuse to download them and to process them as well. It creates containers for running processes, process instance, and tries to make sure that each container don't interact with each other and that it behaves and on the most uh, uh, secure way as, as possible because you are, at the end of the day, executing code on your server. So you really want to make sure that you are just executing the, cont the, the code you allowed to be executed. Uh, of course, it takes, fair on the, uh, it takes care on the process management itself, so communication, communication between process, between the core and the process itself, reporting, logging, 
and other yeah, it's storing uh, the data, the, the final processed data, into some storage, which can, which can be a file, maybe a database, uh, where the final data sets are stored, saved. And of course, it uh, notifies the client about process status and yeah, progress. I said that the, process, uh, the project is rather uh, mature. Uh, it started in 2006, and since then it was developed. Uh, we had multiple versions. Uh, I believe that the... I will just skip this. Uh, I just wanted to come to the, the recent version, uh, because... Uh, sorry. Here we go. Official release of PyWPS 4. This is the current version. Here we go. Uh, and uh, so today we are talking about PyWPS4. There was a big uh, restructure, realization of the code. And uh, we graduated yeah, last year at SOS Geo project. We were probably the longest project in the incubation process. It took us uh, nine years. I always said it pr proudly and loudly. It took nine years to graduate to OS Geo. But now we are, uh, well, official uh, OSGO project and uh, happy member of the OSGO family. And uh, what are the key features of PyWPS 4? Because PyWPS uh, was rewritten from scratch, from the previous version, more or less, more more than less, uh, because of uh, there were new technologies flying around on the internet, uh, which could and should be used as well. For example, the LXML library, which makes the parsing and uh, generating of XML uh, text files much more easier and faster as well. Uh, we are uh, using uh, and heavily depending on Flask as well. Uh, there is this WSGSI interface, which uh, had to be somehow yeah, addressed. Uh, new multiprocessing modules for parallel uh, process calls. Uh, yeah, and of course Docker is one of the technologies uh, you totally probably need to address as well because of the containers and it's, uh, it seems to be a very promising technology. <clears throat> In PyWPS4, we finally are validating some data in the previous versions. We didn't care much what the client sends, uh, send, is sending to the server as long as the data could be processed uh, by the underlying tool like GDL, for example, or uh, GrassGIS. As long as it could, it could be imported, we assume that the data are okay. With the current version, user uh, the yeah, user of uh, PyWPS can set for each process a uh, level of validation of the input data. So basic, uh, for each data type. The basic is of course no validation, and then there is also the, 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 the most strict one is very strict validation, uh, which uses the XML scheme. I, I guess that most of uh, the implementations out there, or most of the usages, will just uh, stick to strict validation, which just attempts to uh, uh, compare the MIME types and, prob and uh, make sure that uh, it fits somehow. That uh, if, the, if the client claims that there is a JSON file going in, then it's probably a JSON file as well. But if you need to be strict uh, to, and uh, because of any reason, you can go with XML scheme validation as well. <coughs> this, of course, applies just for uh, GML inputs, type of inputs. If uh, you, for some reason, need to send SRI shapefile or GeoJSON or GML, the validators need to be adjusted accordingly, and uh, PyWPS is currently having a validator classes for these type of inputs. The other ones would have to need, uh, would have to be at. How are process containerized? Uh, there is a lots of uh, happening uh, in the recent development. The standard way is that. Um, the process, the, the PyWPS instance, 
on every execute call creates a separated uh, directory. And within this directory, all the data, all the input data are uh, downloaded as well as, uh, or stored, as well as the uh, result of the execution is uh, stored there as well. With PyWPS4, we try to, uh, we aim for safer approach, like using Docker containers, so that every process runs in separated Docker environment, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, so th there is no, there is no, uh, uh, danger uh, that uh, the processes will simply rewrite each other's data or stuff like that. There is also a new mechanism of uh, how the parallelization is handled. In the previous version, the only way how you could uh, steer uh, the number of processes which uh, are allowed to run in parallel was just by a, a number number of processes which can simply run in parallel in the configuration file. In this case, <coughs> there was a big issue if you want, if you need it for some reason to have, uh, if you had a probe, if you had a process which would interpolate digital elevation model, which would be very much a computer, uh, sorry, processor demanding as well as uh, hard drive demanding, and if there would be four calls in parallel and uh, the number of uh, processes uh, allowed would be, for example, three, then the last one would be just uh, thrown away, so to say. It wouldn't be allowed, uh, allowed to run on the server. Uh, with PyWPS4, uh, we firstly abandoned the usage of OSFORC, which, we didn't, which wasn't working on, on Windows, of course, but there is a uh, mechanism which will store the requests and put them in the queue. So, uh, and all the time some process uh, will end the calculation, it will just look in the uh, database whether there is another, where is there is, where, whether there is another request for further process execution, and then it, it would just take uh, the, the, the last call from the stack and continue with process execution. So in this way, we can store 50 requests, for example, in the queue and uh, uh, so, th so that the, the client uh, shouldn't get uh, the exception that the, there are too many processes on the server being executed much too often. Yeah, uh, the development, what was happening recently is that we uh, completely have uh, returned back to template-based XML, XML uh, rendering, uh, which is much faster and basically also very much e easier to be implemented. That would be probably the, the biggest change. And uh, this is where we are right now. Uh, we have uh, what, we'd, what would be like what would we like to do? Implementation of WPS 2.0, it is around for a couple of years already. Let's keep, I don't know the details, but we are giving this talk uh, on many for 4Gs and every year, last, in last couple of years, we are saying, yeah, we would like to implement WPS 2.0. I personally doubt that we are going to do that. We are probably skipping, we are probably going to skip this and we are going to for the open API directly, so let's call it WPS3 uh, according to the uh, WFS3 pattern. But uh, the features which will be needed are, uh, are the features which uh, WPS2 introduces will be needed anyway. It is like pausing of the processes, maybe deleting of the running processes, stuff like that has to be implemented and we have to find a uh, best way how to do, how to achieve this with Python. Docker containers flying all around. I was mentioning this several times. Uh, we still, I'm still personally not satisfied with the way how it, this is done, and uh, I would like to incorporate Docker uh, instances more uh, within the PyWPS core. Uh, one of my dreams, uh, which was uh, in the version uh, of the web processing service, sorry, in PyWPS 1.0, was that. <coughs> Uh, the output of the process uh, shouldn't be only a data file, like for example, GeoTIFF or 
Shapefile or GML, but it could be a service directly. So that the client could make a request, okay, I want please process my uh, my vector data, and the result should, shouldn't be GML, but the result should be WFS endpoint generated on the fly. This was in the first version of PyWPS, and we didn't re-implement it so far, but uh, uh, one of the ideas was that uh, this would be uh, implemented with help of either map server or geo server, preferably both, of course, as a backend engines. I was already mentioning uh, geo API uh, or open API, sorry, <laughs> for uh, yeah my mistake. Um, uh, there was a presentation in the previous section about it, and PyWPS totally needs to be part of the family. Uh, our students of uh, Google Summer of Code uh, projects uh, in recent years made some effort for the output storages. I was mentioning that usually uh, the output goes uh, to directories, or but but students were working heavily on having the uh, having the possibility to store the outputs to either Amazon S3 storage or maybe to uh, PostGIS database. Yeah, support for other languages, of course, and other. How is the project uh, organized? Uh, we are OG, OSGO project, that we, means we have a project steering committee. Some of the members of the committee are here in this room, like myself. Tom Kralaid is sitting behind uh, oh, most of you. Thank you for coming, and uh, Luis. Uh, chairing the session in the other room. Uh, if you want to join us, uh, if you want to join our community, either go to Gitter, which is probably the preferably the preferably place uh, to have chat and to commun communicate, as well as you can join us on the mailing list on OSGO. And uh, we are trying to attend sprints and conferences as Phosphor G. What I personally say we are failing in is fundraising. Uh, yeah. We are incubated OS Geo project that uh, guarantees certain level of sustainability and that we have a healthy uh, and growing uh, community. That means we, but it doesn't mean that we can give up and say, okay, this is the given status or granted. We have to work on this heavily and uh, uh, find new resources for the further development as well. Wow, I have still three minutes, so very fastly. How to get it up? Uh, install, preferably with uh, pip install. <laughs> uh, this is how the uh, how the installation looks like, and the most important part is. Uh, <laughs> WPS configuration file along with processes directory where all the processes can be stored as, as single Python files. This is the project structure, uh, sorry, process uh, structure. A process called area uh, is a class derived from process and it has list of inputs as well as list of outputs. And at the end there somewhere has to be a executing function which obtains requests and response. And uh, this is the code you should be able to write in a case you are a Python programmer and this should be relatively easy for you to understand. So what I see here, oh, this is nasty, I would never do that, but uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you totally need to do this, if you need to transform uh, some file to the other format and use OGR to OGR, this is possible too. So let's say this demonstrates the possibilities it has. Not necessarily I would call this a production code. Very briefly about the philosophy, still one minute. Uh, Louis loves uh, idea of bikes. I love bike tools. So uh, this tries to demonstrate that uh, PyWPS is like a bike, apparently. We have bike in the logo. Bike can be uh, the bike can have different shapes, but still can bring you from point A to point B. Uh, they can be large, they can be small, of course. Uh, they can be very cheap ones, but uh, expensive and fancy ones. 
There can be very simple and very complex. I would rather prefer the simple one in this case uh, if I would uh, speak about PyWPS. So this uh, all describes our philosophy. Uh, it should be versatile. Uh, PyWPS can be whatever you want it to, he to, to be. And it should be very much ease of use and easy to or self self repair. You just need to know how to pedal. Question time. Thank you. In case you have no question, I have some, but please. <laughs> so my question is well technical again, but uh, how come you chose to use? standalone Docker, Docker containers as opposed to services because that way you are practically reduced to using the resources on one system while if you would have services like for I know using Docker Swarm or Kubernetes you would not be restricted to one system but to a cluster which can be grow on, grown or uh, shrink automatically and also the number of services that are run automatically so it just seemed Okay, perhaps it's not that easy, but it's much more easy to scale everything like that. Uh, thank you for your comment. I'm not personally involved in this uh, in this part of code, uh, so we will be welcome to join us uh, in the mailing list latest. I would like to see some demos as well. From what I know, one of the uh, there there are two places where you can put Docker in uh, inside of PyWPS. Either you can containerize. <laughs> You can containerize the whole uh, instance, or what we are trying to do is that each process instance starts its own Docker container on demand, deploys it somewhere, and this would be probably your point, yeah. if I understand correctly, and then we reuse the web processing service interface to call inside a process one more time. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I was just uh, saying that if you use it as a service, it would be more scalable and possibly less uh, resource, cons resource uh, hungry because you don't have to have uh, already prepared something. Basically, if you need something, it will be spawned. If you don't need it, it will be closed down. So that's what I was kind of, okay, that's okay. more technical. But thank you. Uh, thanks for the comments as well. And uh, yeah. So imagine you uh, run a process and you spawn a Docker container or something. Uh, if you run a process and you spawn a Docker container and then uh, your server crashes, what happens to your processes? Can you actually get the results? When the question was if I understand correctly, what if I run it in the container and the server crashes? Like uh, the instance of the server? Yeah, so I mean, if say you send a request that, which takes two days to process, and after two hours the web server crashes, the VPS server crashes, but your process is still running, can you get back to the process somehow? Can, I you, can, you, handle the, can I you handle the server crashing and coming back up again? That's what I'm no, asking. no. Once it crashed, uh, the, you should immediately obtain a. Uh, uh, execution exception report and uh, PyWPS tries as hard as possible to clean everything uh, behind itself so that there are no data lying around and no zombie processes lying around. Same applies for the Docker as far as I know. We, uh, Docker was, was one of the possibilities we were looking for by the way also for the process pausing as well as process killing. Um, so, so one more time to repeat my uh, answer. If some process crashes, we try to kill it and clean afterwards everything as, as hard as possible. If it answers your question. Or, if this isn't okay, else? yeah, Jan has one. <laughs> gentle. Do you have a? A user's list as well as a developer's mailing list. If I just want to use Pike WSPS rather than developing it, okay. do you have a mailing list I can use? Oh, sorry, yeah. That was an easy one. No. <laughs> 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 um, but, but, but yes, uh, but yes, there, there are 
We are we are not uh, we th there is not like uh, 400 people at the mailing list. You don't have to be afraid of uh, two technical questions flying all around. You just can join and pretend you are a normal user and uh, we will be kind to you. As well as if you join Gitter, then you might get some response uh, from uh, some of the community members in a much nicer way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so more questions still? If it isn't the case, thank you for your attention and see you here or in other rooms in five minutes.